winning two out of three is not bad. Well, if you're going to beat this Boston club, which they have been beating a lot this year, they're in last place. you got to shut down Big Poppy. David Ortiz lately has been doing everything right. He's seven for his last 12. He's been on base 22 of the last 23 games, and he's starting to hit the ball out of the ballpark. And against Baltimore, well, he was the Big Poppy of old. Now, he hasn't been real good this year, but he's starting to heat it up at the right time for Boston, giving them some hope that maybe they can do something. This is the one guy you can't allow to beat you. He's hit 19 home runs. He's driven in 55. As you can see, he's starting to be the guy that leads this ball club. And so if you get a chance, you pitch around him, and then you get a pretty good chance to win. Well, the tarp is on the field. You might hear some rumblings in the background. That is thunder and lightning. There are tornado warnings in the area. So we'll be back to let you know what the situation is. Sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way. Chicago White Sox baseball is brought to you by Miller Lite. Now back in this original can, it's Miller time. By Ford, proud sponsor of your Chicago White Sox. Check out America's best-selling brand at your local Ford store or online at localfordstores.com. And by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports.
brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Tonight's game's available in Spanish on your SAP audio setting, provided by 97.5 FM ESPN Deportes, Chicago's first and only Spanish language sports radio station. And welcome back to Fenway Park. Now it's a beautiful Fenway Park after the storms have moved through. And the field is in great condition. And now it's time for our Mazda White Sox lineup. And this is how Robin is going to put them out there tonight. Adam Eaton leading it off. Gordon Beckham in the two spot tonight with Jose Abreu, Adam Dunn, Alexi Ramirez, Dan Viciedo, who lately has been red hot, Alejandro Diaz, Tyler Flowers, and Liuri Garcia playing third base in place of Connor Gillespie. The defense, and now they'll line up behind Clay Buckholtz. It's Nava, Bradley, and Holt in the outfield with Bogarts, Drew, Pedroia, and Napoli in the infield. A.J. Pierzynski behind the plate. And Clay Buckholtz on the hill. He's been struggling this year. His ERA 622 on for his 13th start. Opponents just killing him, hitting 322 against him. 87 hits in 63 and two thirds innings. That being said, last year he was 12 and one. Everything went right. This year, not much has gone right. But the last two times out, he's actually thrown the ball like the Buckholtz of last year. The umpires for the game tonight behind the plate, Corey Blazer at first base, Jim Joyce, Doug Eddings is at second, and Marvin Hudson is at third. So the Red Sox come into play tonight, ten games under, nine games in back of Baltimore, and in last place. Sox come in, five games under 500, eight games in back of Detroit, in fourth place. The Tigers really struggling. Robin knows that there's probably a chance if Detroit keeps playing the way they're playing and Kansas City keeps playing the way they're playing, Sox might be able to climb back into this. So they throw the ball around the infield. That means we're ready to play baseball. I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Ken Harrells. Hi, Stevie. Thank you. And once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to White Sox baseball right here with WG and Sports on the U. So happy you could join us for the first of this four-game set and the first of the seven-game road trip prior to the all-star break and before we show you our picks to click you at home select yours. So the 29 year old right hander out of Nederland Texas. He is 6 3 190 pounds. Play buckles and his first pitch of the game. Taken for a strike says Corey Blazer. Eaton hitting at 269, a homer. He's driven in 23. So we had a 39 minute delay. The beautiful one we got here, and all of a sudden it turned a little nasty. A lot of lightning. And the radar, the radar really didn't show it. The radar showed that most of it was going to go north, but that wasn't the case. Well, as you know, my weather app has not been right one time it, ever since I got it. It took a, a right turn and headed south. Chops that one foul. This is the fourth meeting between these two clubs this year in the first three. The Carmines have won two off. And here at Fenway, 310 down the left field line, 301 down the right field line, 380 out there in right, 379 in deep left center, and 420 in deep right center. Buckholz, make no mistake about it, even though he has struggled, this whole club has struggled. I mean, 2012, they were awful. 2013, they were world champions. 2014, they were awful again. So it's one of those situations that everything has gone wrong for them. They've been crippled up. I've never seen this much player movement coming up in the minor leagues as they have had this year. Good try, didn't get it. Now, what they're really going to have to do is make a decision. Pretty soon, and that's Ben Sherrington, the general manager. On do you start to unload, or do you hope that you can get that winning streak, which this team believes they're capable of doing? And that's what you got to find out before the trade deadline. He just got a piece of it. Well, we talked all last season about 
Now Charrington had made some good moves as far as acquiring some attitude, acquiring instead of going out and getting talent, he wanted chemistry. Well, it worked. It did work. It turned them around. But it's hard to maintain that level of chemistry more than a year or a season, so to speak. Well, also, you're not getting close to the same kind of production out of Buckholz, who had to be sent to the minor leagues for a month. As that breaking ball was up. Well, this guy, when he's right, he is tough. He has good stuff. He is 61 and 37. And Juan Nieves and John Farrell, the manager and the pitching coach, and both very knowledgeable about pitching, have tried to speed Buckholz up. They haven't been able to do it. Well, he's 24 games over 500 pitching at Fenway Park as his home. Park. When you do that, you, you're doing something right. Now, this year, no, he's not. No, he's always had overwhelming stuff. That's never been a problem. But he's been what a lot of guys might call tender psyche guys. And meaning, if it's going right for him, he starts to get on a roll, things go very well. He gets in trouble during the course of a game. Sometimes he has a hard time getting himself out of it. And this year's a great example of that. There's a shot. And that's going to hang up. For Bradley. And one has to hang Wolfram. All right, now let's check out our picks to click this evening. Jim Angio, our director and the crew. Well, he went with the Oz. Steve's going with Alex Ramirez and Kristen Gorman. Daughter of terrific announcer for the Boston Celtics, Mike Gorman, and now we're going to go with Leary Garcia. Here is Beckham. Beckham at 248, seven homers, 24 knocked in. That was a good at bat by Adam Eaton. Should have helped Beckham as he hits that one in the center field. So quickly two gone. Sox coming hitting him 249 with a 4.21 ERA. Buck Holtz has been with his Boston organization since 2005 when he was drafted. He was in the supplemental round, which is just after the first round, the 47, 42nd pick overall. And he's been a good one for them. Well, once again, here's the guy that everybody. Wants to see. Some of my old friends here in the media. We came to see your first baseman. Yeah, why not? Takes it right there. He's hitting 276, 27 homers, 69 knocked in. He's hit 19 out of the last 20. And when we played these guys early in the season, he has faced. Buckholz three times and he was 0 for 3. Buckholz has only had one losing season in that Boston Red Sox uniform. He came up in 2007, 2008. He went 2 and 9, but he was very young. 15 starts only. ERA 6.75, and after that, every year. Has been a plus 500 year. Two out and a two strike pitch. Good check. And of course, we've got a Brayu, we've got a Lexi. They're going to target field. We have got to get Chris Sale in there. And is Chris Sale an all star? Well, you decide because the way you can decide is by voting for the last spot on that roster. Another good check. Two and two. There it is. WhiteSox.com slash vote. MLB.com slash vote. Or text A5 to 89269. And that counts also as a vote for Chris Sale. He certainly deserves it. He's had a great first half. There's a chopper two hopper group and a one two three inning for Buckholz after half inning of play. It's our guys, nothing. Their guys coming to back.
yummy, yummy. We got food for your tummy. Right here, right now. Step right up, step right up. Let's there take a look at that. John Farrell's going to line up his Red Sox tonight. Brock Holt leading it off, and Daniel Nava, Dustin Pedroia, David Ortiz with Mike Napoli at first. Stephen Drew, A.J. Pierzynski, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Xander Bogarts at third rounded out. The defense, and on the lineup behind Scott Carroll. Diazza, Eaton, and Viciato in the outfield with Garcia, Ramirez, Beckham, and Abreu in the infield. Tyler Flowers gets a nod behind the plate. And Scott Carroll on the hill. It's 2 and 5, ERA, a touch over 5, on for his eighth start. Opponents hitting 319 against him. And he'll probably want to be very careful with David Ortiz, who has become the big puppy of old over the last 10 days or so. So here's Brock Holt, the right fielder. This guy's played all over for him. Originally a second baseman, but that position is filled here. You're not going to be at second for a while, not with Dustin Pedroia. And what he means to this team, what he's meant to this team, and what he will mean to this team. He's the heart and soul of this ball. There's the strike. Holt comes in doing a good job for him. 317, a couple of homers. He's driven in 18. Red Sox hitting at 244 as a club with a 3.817 ERA. They are 21 and 24 here at home. And that's something you don't see very often. The Red Sox team. Here in July, under 500 at Fenway. Pretty surprising to me, but the Red Sox have just not been scoring runs. No, they have had their problems. Everything is contagious. Last year, it was in a positive fashion. The contagion this year has been in a negative fashion. And they're trying a whole lot of folks. And putting him in a lot of different places. Where to get pitch? A little bit low. Hope came from Pittsburgh along with Joel Handrahan in a big deal. That was back in 2012. And he's turned into a very good player for the Red Sox. He gone. In our Xfinity pitch tracks. That one right in the middle of the second and the sixth. And good enough. Here's the left fielder, Daniel Nava. Hitting at 227, a couple of homers, he's driven in nine. That was a switch hitter, but almost a non factor right handed. Hitting 260 as a left hand hitter. 097 as a right hand hitter. Well, this Boston club symptomatic of a lot of teams in such that when the big guys struggle, they have a lot of young guys on this team. They're going to struggle. When they hit, it makes it a lot easier. It takes a lot of pressure, and pressure is the biggest killer of performance in any sport. It takes a lot of pressure off the young ones when the big guys hit. So that's out number two. Well, they also expected this year that Xander Bogart would really start to come alive. He's still a very young player, and he's probably going to be very good. But he has not been the player that they thought he was going to be. Well, he's going to be. He's got talent, but again, it goes back to big guys struggle. He's going to struggle because he's a young guy. He's going to, all the rest of these young guys are struggling. Actually, therefore, while Ortiz and AJ were the two guys carrying the club and driving in runs. Here is Pedroia, 284, four homers, 32 driven in. It's hard to break in as a youngster in a high market like a Boston, like Chicago, like a New York, like a Los Angeles, and the club not doing well. Hmm. 
Outfield straight up. Not equal distance. Yes, that is out of play right side. And the one thing that Scott has to be aware of, and he doesn't usually go up there, but Pedroia is as good a high fastball hitter as there probably is in the league, maybe in all of baseball. And of course, Scott is a sinker ball pitcher. Well, at five foot one, he's got to be a good high fastball hitter. He's not. He's not a tall man, <laughs> but he's a good. He's a good one. <laughs> he is that. Last That's day. Why. Last day games. Things coming around for him. That's why I love baseball. They come in all sizes and all shapes. Beckham's got him, and a nice one-two-three inning for Scott. And after one, no score. Don't believe that that's really here at Fenway Park. Target sale? Well, you would be right. That is kind of a mock up of where we believe Chris Sale belongs, but certainly the Red Sox might have some other ideas, especially when they face it. And that'll be Wednesday that they will see our left hander. But Robin put it the best. The, the difference is that the culture of the game. Bud tried to turn it around a little bit and make it meaningful because of the Milwaukee situation. As here's Adam Dunn, and he did. Now the winner of the All Star Game will be hosting the World Series. But it's a fans' game. They pick the players that they want to go. And I know one thing if we have a chance to win that all star game. In the eighth or ninth inning and we have the bases loaded the National League has the bases loaded. And a good strong left handed hitter coming up there. Who do you want on the mound? Yeah I would say that would be a fairly big weapon out of your pen. Is to bring Chris Sale in. As, exactly. a, as a situational left handed. Well, he's going to be pitching Wednesday, so. But you know, here's here's one of the difference. In 68, when we went to Houston to play in the All-Star Game, we had a meeting before, and Dick Williams was a manager, and he said, "Fellas, he said some of you guys are not going to like me after this game is over because some of you are not going to get in this game because we're here to beat those blankety-blank National Leaguers." 
we want to win this ball game, and that's what I'm going to try to do. So if you don't get in the game, I'm telling you right now, don't feel bad. Well, we got beat one nothing. It's only one nothing All-Star game in the history of All-Star play, but that was the culture of the game then. Well, the National League felt the same way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Way back. He looks up. You can put it on the board. Yes. A rocket. And it's one nothing. And he just passed Carl Yastrzemski with his 453rd homer. 13th of the year, he's driven in 34, and that was a line drive rocket. The Buckholz trying to get this up and in. He got it up, it just wasn't in. And Adam takes it over the bullpen on a line drive. And here's Alexa. That's the 11th home run that Buckholz has thrown this year. But prior to the commissioner making it meaningful, having a meaningful consequence, prior to that, it was just more of a everybody's going to get in the game type scenario. Say. Four for 17 with a home run lifetime off Buckles. And that's high pop up. Drew. Leaves there. There are the two All Stars. Fifth rookie in White Sox history named to American League All-Star team. That is Jose, richly deserved. And Alexi had a great first half. First White Sox shortstop named since Ozzie Guillen back in 1991. Here's Vicieto, tank at 250, 10 homers, 31 driven in. There's a shot. So with that home run by Dunn, the Alex Nellius family will team up with White Sox Charities in loving memory of Ursula. That'll bring up Piazza. Alejandro at 222, five homers, 25 knocked in. And there's Mark Salas. He is coaching at first in place of Daryl Boston, who had a family matter. There's the chieftain. Yaza has faced Buckholz three times, had a ten, uh, ten times, has three hits. And here is a rack of money. But we get the home run, the line shot home run by Evan Dunn. It's one nothing good guy.
Ortiz, Napoli, and Drew. David at 261, 19 homers, 55 knocked in. And as Steve told you, he is starting to swing the bat like Big Papa. Been on base 22 of the last 23 games. And if he gets out, he can carry the whole ball club. He can. He's one of the few guys that can do that. He's been one of the great clutch hitters in the last 25 years. They got him listed at 230. He might be a touch heavier than that. They got the shift on. And Sox fans come out to the ballpark for Italian Heritage Night on Friday, July 18th. Our Sox are offering specially priced tickets to everyone with Italian Heritage, their family, and friends starting at 10 bucks for lower level seats. So to purchase, visit whitesox.com backslash Italy. Give you an idea how things went last year for the Red Sox. Napoli drove in 92. And this year, He's driven in 33 and we're well past the halfway mark. It has not been particularly good year, although the on base percentage for him is good. They pay Mike Napoli to drive him in. And he did that last season. Big yeah. runs. And when he was doing that, he was giving Big Poppy some protection. So it was a positive. Double edged sword. As you can see, 13th in batting average, 14th in runs, tied for 12th in home runs, 7th in on base percentage. It's been a very bad offensive year. Normally, even in the bad years, the bad years for the Red Sox, they didn't have any pitching, but they could always hit, especially in this ballpark. And that's what's been so troubling for them this year. There's a chopper two hopper. Well, their philosophy has been one of over the years of offense. And the reason their philosophy was offense. They felt like it was just too very, very difficult to get, you know, yourself, Steve. How did you feel the first time you walked into Fenway Park and you looked at the monster? Well, it didn't bother you that much. The style, but I'm talking the, about, you've seen other guys. Say, the style killed. of pitcher I was, I didn't mind it because I always went inside to right handers. Yeah. And I loved when they tried to hit the ball of the ballpark because I just threw the soft curve balls away. But I think for anybody, when they look down the line here, and literally, it almost feels like it's right behind you. You take a look at your left fielder, you look like you could almost shake hands with him, and you go, well, any fly balls out of the park. And that's where guys make their mistake here. You know that. You played here. You starred here. You realize if pitchers stayed away from you entirely. You got killed. <laughs> you know, no <laughs> chance. They got killed. No chance to win here. The only guys that beat us were guys who were not afraid to throw the ball and yeah. not aim it, to throw the ball inside. Drew. 31 year old shortstop off to a slow start 141 couple homers five knocked in. No I've seen guys absolutely you couldn't I'm telling you you they they were having trouble breathing. Rookies who go out there and make a start. And. They just had that look of fright on their face. Well over the years when you take took a look at the Red Sox alignments. The time you played here. After that, in the 70s, they're just great hitters. They were great hitters. Nice, nice one, two, three inning. Six up, six down for Scott Carroll.
local nationwide insurance agent serving the area for 36 years. To join the nation, visit jeffvook.com. Nationwide is on your side. It's a 1 0 game. Adam Dunn, 453 home runs, passing the great Carl Yastrzemski. So it'll be Flowers, Garcia, then back to the top of the order with Adam Eaton. Tyler hitting at 226, five homers and 26 knocked in. Takes a pitch outside. The cutter to 89. And that's right, nobody's going to hit it. And that's a big overhand curveball that Buck Holtz has. Looked tantalizing, but it wasn't a strike. Lays off of that one. First to four here, then we'll go to Cleveland for three, and then this, the All Star break. Three and one to count. Just tuning in, we had a 39 minute delay, weather delay, threats of had tornado warnings. Out. There's a bullet right at it. That's a hang woofer. And Sox fans, Summer Fun Day is Wednesday, July 23rd at 110. And our Sox are offering specially priced tickets to day camps, park district daycare, summer camps, sports camps, and their friends and families. And groups of 20 or more will receive a free school board message. So tickets start at 10 bucks for lower level seats. For tickets, visit whitesox.com backslash fun. Here's Leury. And for those of you who might not have been with us, Connor Gillespie took a fastball right off the outside of his right knee. He's bruised, but listed as day to day. Yeah, he's okay. Just he didn't feel very good. <laughs> I couldn't understand that. No, not when it sounded like somebody throwing a billiard ball up against a wall from up here where we were sitting. That five and a quarter ounce baseball can hurt to hit you in the right spot. Because there is a chopper two hopper. So here's Adam. Adam had a good first at bat, saw a lot of pitches, which should bode well for him. Before finally lining out hard to his counterpart, Jackie Bradley Jr. Buckholz has gotten a few pitches up, and it's helped him that, by and large, our hitters are lining it right at people. But they've hit the ball a couple times in center field very hard. And line drive by Viciato did find a hole in right. There is a curveball strike. Taking some other action for you. Top of the fourth in Cleveland, five nothing Yankees. Bottom of the fourth in St. Pete, two nothing Kansas City. Later on, Minnesota taking on the Mariners in Seattle. That covers our division. It's out of play. Baltimore leading Washington, two nothing in Washington. That's in the bottom of the fifth. 
I think, by the way, Joe Madden might have figured out the answer to the problems of the Tampa Bay Rays. Well, that's something. They've eight of their last ten. They've won three in a row, and he brought in a witch doctor. Sprinkle some magic stuff over his team. You know, I, I love Joe Madden. <laughs> I tell you, he it's work. Meanwhile, it's a one-two-three inning. Meanwhile, we still lead it one nothing. Half of the third inning. It'll be the lower third of the order. Jerzinski, Bradley, and Bogarts to face our Scott Carroll, who's retired the first six with two strikeouts. AJ hitting at 253, four homers, and 31 knocked in. Takes first pitch strike. By and large, Scott's been able to keep the ball down, and when he does, he induces a lot of ground balls. His sinker works, keeps it down. He's very effective. Well, Beckham's had four ground balls on. Only six hitters, two strikeouts, and four <laughs> ground balls to Beckham. Keep the ball in the infield, you're probably not going to get hurt. That's a great concept. You know? Except if they bunt you to death. Two and one. Two and two. Odds were overwhelming. AJ was going to swing if that one was close. The one thing he has not done this year, which he doesn't do a whole lot of anyway, is walk. He's walked nine times in 253 at bats. But he also doesn't mind taking a pitch, getting hit with it to wind up a board. And he can cancel a post game show. Right over the middle of the plate, just a little above the knee, and AJ took it by a diving Gordon Beckham. First man aboard. So here's Bradley Jr., 218, a homer. He's driven in 24.
He's a guy who really got hurt by the Grady Sizemore experiment. Sizemore looked great in spring training. Actually won the job in center field. The job that would have been Bradley's had not Sizemore had that great year. Well, Grady eventually couldn't do it, and now they're turning back to Bradley. And they're holding AJ on. Which is a bit surprising. Two and one. Another nice crowd on hand. They're averaging 36,291. I was looking at Brian Butterfield, third base coach, going through a set of signs. thing you should be worried about is that runner at first. A lot of times what happens to a pitcher is they're sailing along, they're in the windup, and the first time they move into a stretch, the control deserts them briefly. And hopefully he can get back to throwing it over. Full count. That ball was out of the zone and Bradley really helped him out. Because that would have put Scott in a big hole. First and second, nobody out. Xander Bogarts, who hit it pretty well to start the season and then went into a deep, deep slump in the on deck circle. Yes, he did. He gone. Helped him out. Two pitches in a row. Thank you very much. Eighty-one strikeouts to go with twenty-five walks, and that's what a lot of young hitters got to learn. A little patience. Let the pitcher walk you if he's going to, because it's a completely different inning now. Yeah, he's winning ball four and five. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's in the dugout. So here is Bogarts, 241, six homers and 20 knocked in. And he takes first pitch strike. Center field. Two down. Sox fans celebrate a special birthday or anniversary or even host a business function in a Diamond Suite at a Sox game. Diamond Suites can accommodate groups from 10 to 100 guests. Single game packages include a great food menu as well as beverages and park passes. So to purchase, visit whitesox.com backslash suites. Great food, beverages, parking passes. Wow. Holt takes strike one. Brock Holt, 26 years old. And for John Farrell, Holt is a handy man to have around because you can put him just about any place on the diamond and he gives you a pretty good effort.
Sal. Yeah, I had a talk with John last year in a conversation. He said something that caused me to say, boy, it's, it's what an amazing turnaround. He said, Hawk, he said, I'm not doing anything. I'm just getting heck out of weight and letting them play. And that's what good managers do. They don't want to manage. They want to get them on a roll and get the heck out of the way and let them play. Well, they just as soon have a set lineup. Most managers will tell you that. Occasionally they have a platoon system or two. What helped last year was the resurgence of two pitchers. John Lester came back to have a very good year. Clay Buckholtz, 11 games over 500. And Juan Davis in that role along with Farrell. And they did a nice, nice job with the staff. Yes, they did. And the players just absolutely love one. Down wall. And that'll retire the side. We've completed three. We lead it one nothing. And click on the Game Zone banner for updated stats and information. The Game Zone is powered by St. Xavier University. Tradition and innovation, this is where they meet. We're into the top of the fourth. A run on two hits, no errors for our guys. No runs, one hit, and no errors for their guys. It'll be back in McBray, you and Doug. Gordon 0 for 1 lined out to center field. Outfield playing him for the most part straight up gap out there in right center. As he takes first pitch strike. Another good hook, and if he gets ahead, and that means getting the first pitch in the zone somewhere, breaking out that curveball, it's really tough on the hitters. Another guy, you're going to beat him on his fastball. Yeah. And it, it, it's a lot easier said than done. <laughs> Very seldom is a guy going to get three good curveballs over and one at bat. 
Well, but Buck Holtz, when he's right, he's got four pitches that he can command. That's when he's right. That's what he needs. was 11 games over yep. 500 last year. When you get guys like that, the only thing you want to try to do is that's it. Drew, the only thing you want to try to do against guys with four pitch pitchers who can command them is just try to be dangerous. That's all. Because if they get their pitches where they want them, you're going to go for four probably. Yeah, but you've said it many times, and it is true. But somewhere in the course of that at bat, he's going to give you one pitch. It might be a fastball that he misses. It might be a hanging curveball, a backup slider. It's one pitch. Now, you follow it back, well, that's your fault. You might not get another one, but that's where you have to make your money if you're a hitter. From a pitching standpoint, you got to get away with a few mistakes during the course of a game, because if you don't, then you get knocked out. That's one thing that excites me so much about the guy at the plate right now. Will he foul mistakes back? Sure. But boy, he sure puts a lot of those mistakes in the play. Hard. And a few in the seats. More than a few in the seats. Yeah. It's that old saying, show me a good mistake hitter and I'll show you a star. That fastball, 93. I would just hope that somewhere along the line, in the course of this game, that Buck Holtz remembers that one and goes back there on the inner portion of the plate because we've seen Abreu more than once get fooled and then take it out. Well, guys who are strong, and there is absolutely no question about this guy who can hit with short arms can be devastating. That's where the pitch was in Oakland. The pitch that he hit That's out right. so hard it was down and in. And it was a repeat of a pitch in the same spot that he missed. Yeah, on May 14th. Five White Sox rookies have been all stars. Mini Minoso in 51, Tommy AG 66, Carlos May 69, Ron Kittle that great year of 83, and Jose Abreu this season. And yet to be determined just how many he does take out of the ballpark or how many he does drive in. 2 2 pitch. Well, there he got a mistake and followed it back because it was just out of way. Enough. He right. couldn't get the sweet spot. It was a hanging curveball, but you'll see on pitch tracks, it's a way enough where he catches it off the end of the bat. If that's hung over the middle of the plate, that's up around the sports authority side, which is way back there. If he hits it good, it's way over. <laughs> Fastball. That was up out of the zone. So two down. First strike out of the night for Buckholtz, and he kept this one upstairs and threw it by him. So here's Adam. The difference in the ball game. Here's our four drive of the game, and it's a line drive rocket. Taking it over the bullpen, and that is the only scoring of the game. Didn't take long to leave the premises. Feel spread out. And Pedroia out there in short right field. Close pitch goes Adams. Here we show you the defense and that most unusual 420 little triangle. 3 and 0 oh and he's hitting. That was a 
cutter, though. And he probably saw the spin and said, okay, well, I'm not going to throw me a fastball. No, his action right there, he was taken. He would, but if he was hitting, he still wouldn't have swung it. 35th. There's a ball into the gap. Nobody's going to get that one. So he's going to pull into second with his 13th two back. I think Adam was a little surprised how close that was. Does this look like a guaranteed two, but it so often happens because that fence isn't all that far away. You're going to go to second base. You better be hustling. And Bradley Jr. gets it back in. And it's a close play. But Adam is in. And here's Alexa. He popped up to his counterpart. Stephen Drew. Breaking ball inside. Two and up. Yankees still leading Cleveland five nothing. Bottom of the fifth at Progressive Field. Washington has tied up Baltimore at two. That's in the bottom of the sixth in D.C. Cincinnati leading the Cubs one nothing. Bottom of the fourth at the Great American Ballpark. Houston leading Texas six nothing. Bottom of the second. Those Rangers are really scuffling. Another twelve. Under. And a million back. And seemingly 1,200 and falling. Oh. Falling and 17 back of Oakland. Jeff Samarja, by the way, threw a brilliant ball game in his debut for the Oakland Ball Club. Well, it doesn't surprise anybody, especially us two. Nope. <laughs> no, it does not. That was a blockbuster. And here comes Tank. Tank shot a single in the right field. Hard. But Texas, when we played them, boy, you could feel it. That's one thing about baseball. You can feel things. At attitude in the atmosphere. It's it's really a, almost a tangible thing in the what we felt first time going down to Texas was there was a lot of things wrong. And they've gotten beaten up since then. Not yeah. just in, in the standings, but about physically beaten up since since that because we went down there early. Yeah. But when won the count, the tank. Side of that page, so you can walk in some ballparks and go on the road and you say, uh oh. <laughs> two strikes, two out, two on. And Steve touched on it just a moment ago. When you get in the hole of this guy, you got a problem. And he's got an exceptional curveball. He has at times fallen in love with his cutter. I think that's to the detriment of the curveball. Straight change that's really good when he uses it. And enough, enough pop on the fastball to get your attention. Gets up there 94.
Well, I'm with you 100% on that. I think a cutter in and of itself is terrific. But when you fall in love with one and you have a good curveball and you're also a throw slider, I think a cutter is detrimental. Yeah, it's too many, too many pitches to be able to master, certainly in one out. Good eye. Two and two. It's full. Had him 0 and 2. One thing about AJ we have seen when he was in Minnesota. Also in our uniform, if you're a pitcher, you better be ready to throw anything in your arsenal at any time. That ball hit hard in the right center field. Stretch. They go back. Look up. You can put it on the board. Yes. Yes. Had him 0 and 2. And it is a 4 0 Sox lead. That's the 11th home run of the year. He now has 34 driven in. Probably the biggest mistake outside of that one, which was a cutter up and away, is the fact that he pitched so carefully to Ramirez, bringing up one of our hottest hitters in Dan Vicieto, and it cost him a three spot. A bomb. You go over there, over that bullpen in that corner out there by the 420s. Now you have. Absolutely killed it. Yeah, you won't find you won't find too many right handers that will hit it in that spot. Yaza takes strike two. And that just goes to show you how this year to 0 2 probably a month ago, month and a half ago, would have chased one of those bad pitches. But he took them easy to go to 3 2. It completely well, completely different this time of year because he's really started to heat it up, and Buckholz did not get away with the high cutter. Well, we we've seen it from spring training, and you've got to go back. Yes, yeah, there's the ball. So Stevenson, you got to go back to time. We saw it spring training the start the tank got off to. And he fell into a funk. He kept working on it and working on it. I think you will remember that I said he was Todd had him into a, a position that he had never been in with us before in spring training. And it was not anything, so to speak, mechanical. All it was is more of a trigger. And the trigger bang with the hands going almost behind his right ear, about an inch and a half or two inches, instead of going forward and out. And of course, strength has never been a problem for him. No. Well, he's one of the strongest right handed hitters in the game. That's a long way out there. Two and two. So he's letting Alejandro back into the event. Out. 
receiver can fall the ball off his body he, with the best that ever played this game. He will take more. Yeah. He is like Alex Avila behind the plate. When he is hitting, he'll take more abuse. He'll abuse his body more than any, any other hitter in this league. Yeah, he can. <laughs> he can hit it off, <laughs> off his body more times in the course of a game. Where he stands in the box and with his approach to the pitch, it's not going to stop either. It will continue. There's a shot. So he had him over to let him back into it. It's that old saying by my former partner. God rest his soul, Hall of Famer Don Drysdale. If you can, yeah, right, if you can get him on three, we get him on one. You get him on one, or two, or three. That's right. A lot of guys on O2. That's that's the one thing that I find today more so than ever is O and two. They'll throw a pitch that's so far out of the zone that it's not even tantalizing, yeah. and then you've just wasted one pitch. And the object of an 0-2 pitch because you're so far ahead make it look good enough make sure it's off the plate make it look good enough where you might get a swing that way you get a guy out on three pitches you don't have to worry about going deep in the count as we've seen has not exactly done Clay Buckholz a whole lot of good this fourth inning here's Tyler he just killed one right at Bradley Jr. in center field Downs it. Good rip right there. Alejandro 12 for 17 in stolen bases. There's nothing wrong if you get 0 2 on a guy and you make a good pitch, a pitcher's pitch on 0 2, and he happened to be looking for it, and you throw me a curveball down and away to try to tease me to chase it, and I'm sitting on it and I hit a ball in the right field hard. There's nothing wrong with that. But what is wrong is when you got a guy 0 2, as you mentioned, you throw one so far off the plate, I don't even offer it. And or you hang one 0 2. You know, if you get a base hit 0 2, I'd rather have you do it on the third pitch than the seventh pitch. Saves me, <laughs> saves me wear and tear. Especially in today's culture. Yeah. Well, yeah, when they start taking you out at 110, start looking at you at 100. You better get a whole lot of innings in before then. Curveball. And the count one and two. Tip hung on to, but the three run homer by Diane Viciato. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth meeting, 4 0.
to the All-Star game. Isn't Chris Sale just the best? Indeed. I sure think so, and there you see it. Well, the question is, is for our tweeters and our voters out there, is Chris Sale an All-Star? You decide. And you do it by voting. Daniel Nava takes ball one for nothing. Four five and zero oh for our guys. Oh one and zero oh for their guys. Alfield straight up spread out about equidistant. Nava becomes the a big hitter in this sequence because of the guys coming up next. You don't get him, then you got to worry about Pedroia, Ortiz, and Napoli. There's the strike two and one. And this is the first of four game set tomorrow night. Johnny Danks against Brandon Workman. And that game also right here over WGN Sports on the U. On Wednesday. Nice pick. Good feed. And they get him. I think that was a little long for the underhand toss and yeah, I think it was. I think Jose probably will realize or that far away that toss has a long way to go to beat a, a fast runner. If Nava was a step quicker, you don't get him. He got him by oh, probably a step. And I think that's what <laughs> Jose I think he realizes that. One thing is, you don't see him make a lot of mistakes twice. He's been amazing. Yep. He had both with the lumber and the leather. His range at first is really surprising. Well, he's got that quick first yeah. step. Yes, he does. Pedroia went out to his counterpart, Beckham. Pedroia breaks his bat. That one just barely goes on the foul side of the line. Two down. Here's Big Poppy. He also grounded down to back. As they had the shift on, that was in the short right field. He's feeling good swinging the bat. He's very dangerous to left and left center field in this ballpark. Yeah, he's hit a lot of home runs in those bleachers, top of the monster and over the monster. Gordon's going to get him again. And that'll retire the side, so we score three for him. Then he shuts him down. We'll go to the fifth leading four nothing.
Found some fly balls. Well, getting in the neighborhood of fly balls anyway. <laughs> and he was scheduled to take batting practice today, but most of batting practice was rained out as they covered the field. And so it looks like he's got a chance to come back sometime this year. I know he wants to. And he's starting to get himself in pretty good shape if he's going to take batting practice and take some fly balls. Well, we've got the right people handling it. We've got a terrific medical staff. We've got Hermie and Brian and your people we'll take care of it. Leary fouls it back. Cutter at 88. I know it's a great thought. I just love thinking about him being in that lineup next year. And for a long time. For the Bray and Tank. Tell you that Moises as he gets him. That Moises Sierra brings a lot of energy to that dugout. And in that clubhouse. You well, know, he's got a usually a pretty big smile on his face. He's the guy that when Jose hits a home run, he usually comes over and take a towel and cool him off. Yeah. So here's Adam. <laughs> I think they're setting him up for something. It looks like a distraction to me. There's a two hopper. And off the bag, he says. That's pure hustle down the line by Adam Eaton. And John Farrell, I think, is going to take a look in the dugout. First, he has Napoli. Napoli probably said his foot was on the bag. He's going to check it out. We'll see it again. Drew gets it there. Until from that angle. From up here in real time, it looked close, very, very close. The thing is, if you're a first baseman, and you know this because you were a first baseman, don't go back and try to get the bag. No. You gotta try to sell it. You try to sell it. Same thing with a tag. If you're gonna make a tag on any of the bases. Put the glove down, make your tag, never go back, because if you go back, it's going to show the umpire that you don't believe your foot was there. And when he went back here, that might have shown him, but we'll see. They're going to take a look at it. Boston is challenging this, so this is a Red Sox challenge. Got to be conclusive. And there, that's not conclusive right there. That angle. Tim Joyce, crew chief. And this is probably the best look and we do know one thing the ball did beat him and we also know that he went back and tried to tag it a second time. I would say Jim Joyce made the right call from that angle. And apparently not they're going to overrule it. They're going to overrule it. And he is out. So here is Beckham. Yeah, that's closest best angle we have. Still to me it was not conclusive. But it is what it is. 
Gordon has gone out hard to center and he's grounded to short. Numbers lately have not been indicative of the way he's been swinging the bat. He's hit some balls hard right at people. Well, Colts got to the 0-2 wipeout curveball, but Gordon able to just touch it off the end of the bat. Popped up right side, and Napoli's got room. And that'll retire this side. We are halfway home, leading 4 0. Napoli to lead it off here in their half of the fifth inning. And there's a man responsible for three of the four. Three run homer, Adam Dunn. The other home run. In the meantime, Scott Carroll is keeping everything down. He's thrown seven ground balls. He's fanned four. There's been one ball hit to the outfield. That was by Bogarts. We talked earlier about how guys could pitchers right hand who can't pitch inside here are going to get beat. Tommy John pitched one of the best games I've ever seen pitched in this ballpark. He pitched a two hit shutout. He never threw an inside strike, but he was a left hander with a sinker that went down and away, and he had excellent control. He probably had more than a few of those guys. Trying to pull everything out of the park because at that time he didn't throw real hard. Didn't throw hard enough to block your eye. What a career Tommy John had. Even after this year. 287 wins. <laughs> and he's never even mentioned. I know. I know. It's amazing. Yeah. It really is. That's out of play right side. Never even mentioned when the Hall of Fame comes up. 
He might have more wins than any other by person. Not to get into the whole thing. Jim Cott has a whole lot of them also. What do you have? 283? Something like that. And for the longest time, you and I could not believe it. it was Bert Blyla couldn't get in the hall. The 60 shutout. And Kenny, especially too, because what do you have? 17, Eight, 17, 17 gold gloves? 18, 17 or 18 yeah. gold gloves. And could hit. Newcott was a great pitcher. He was a Hall of Fame. I mean, there's no question about it. Softly hit. Napoli. Another ground ball. Eight ground balls now. Of the 13. Out. This is about exactly how Scott Carroll looked when he was called up for that first game. And his folks in the stands kept everything down. It was absolutely brilliant against Tampa Bay. 27th of April. Seven and a third. No earned runs. Drew takes first pitch strike. He's a strikeout victim. That was to end the second inning. Bottom of the sixth in Cleveland, Yankees leading 5 2. Ken City, Big James Shields. Shutting out Tampa Bay 2 0. Bottom of the seventh in St. Pete. There's something about going back and playing against a team that traded you away. It usually brings out the best in just about everyone. Tonight, no exception for big game James. These days with Kansas City, they're all big games. We've talked about this being the toughest right field to play, especially for playing day games. This is Adam Eaton's first adventure in center field here. And you get that 420 in straight away. Does this cause you any more problems because of the wall in left and the triangle that's seemingly forever out there? Not for him, no. He's not going to have any problems out there. Um, you get you get certain center fielders. Yeah, they can play anyway. They can play an Okie Finoki. <laughs> They're not gonna have any problems. He's one of those guys. Well he's been just outstanding defensively this year. He's he's been tremendous. Fun to watch. I mean he's just a fun guy to watch play baseball. Energy, talent, another ground ball. Nine ground balls now. It's pretty amazing. And we're going to play a four o'clock game here on Thursday. That's much to the pitcher's advantage, but do you remember ever playing a game at four o'clock? No. no. No, I know one thing. If it's, if it's sunny, whoever's playing right field is going to have a <laughs> ball out there. AJ, he's got their only hit. He had a rocket between first and second. Four, five, and zero oh for us. Zero, oh, one, and zero. Oh. Yeah, no, I don't ever remember four o'clock start. And the, re the reason it's four o'clock probably should have been earlier. We go to Cleveland, not that long a flight. They go to Houston, which is a fairly long flight. So they're going to get in late, but it's still four. Right at him. Hang with him, and that'll retire the side. We'll go to the sixth. It is four nothing.
Sox take on the Astros at 7 10. All fans are invited to stay for a post game fireworks show presented by Beggar's Pizza. Beggar's Pizza. Double cheese. Purchase tickets today by visiting whitesox.com or calling 866 Sox. Sixth inning, 4 0. White Sox. The Brayu, Dunn, and Ramirez. Jose, a grounder to short, and a strikeout. He when was I, hitting the 19 of his last 20. Well, when our guys get multiple home runs, this team plays just about 750 baseball, winning almost three of every four. And there are multiple home runs tonight. Takes first pitch strike. Last 20, things going pretty well. Eight home runs, 18 driven in. It scored 12 of them. Get foul. That's fair ball. And out number one. Shift on for Adam. Adam just rocketed one out of here on his 453rd home run and 13th of the season. He also has doubled the score. That home run he hit was just a bullet over the bullpens in right field. It would have been fun to see how far that would have gone if he had gotten it up. Pretty good pitch to get it. We got a few guys in this lineup that can hit him a long way. Yes, we do. <laughs> There's some thunder in there. One and one to count. There you look at the numbers so far, just the one walk, but two home runs have yielded four runs. Breaking ball, pretty good pitch, didn't get it. Count. I think Adam knew it. That had a lot of movement on it, and it caught the inside corner. Wants it in, and you see the late movement. And although he did yank it into the zone, that one probably had the corner. I think it did have the corner. Alexei has popped to short and walked. Then he scored ahead of the three run bomb by Vissiato.
That one was a strike. Even though it looked like it came in high, it did drop into the zone as Alexi. Knees buckle. As you can see in the Xfinity pitch tracks, it's there. One, two, three inning. We go to the bottom of the six. Leading four nothing. Thing. Good guys. And in the meantime, Scott Carroll is pitching the game of his life. Even though the Red Sox are not hitting as well as they will, this is still a pretty tough lineup to face in this ballpark, and he's just sawed his way right through. Here's Bradley, the center fielder, as he takes pretty good pitch, didn't get it. One and zero. Oh. He struck out, swinging at two bad pitches. On a three-one count. Swinging a low fastball for three-two and a high fastball for strike three. That was in a big spot in the game too, because AJ had just let off the inning with a single. If he does take a walk, which is something that he doesn't do very much, that inning sets up in a completely different fashion and puts a lot more pressure on Scott Carroll. Good strike. Bradley wearing Tony Canigliaro's old number. Tony Canigliaro was a young outfielder for you youngsters. He led the American League in home runs when he was 20 years old. There's some swamp skits. Right up the street from here. 6'4, 220 pounds with about a 32 inch waist. Pop foul, and it's going to be a souvenir. Well, that one was a good five inches off the outside corner for ball four. And Bradley, 
25 walks and 254 at bats has helped Scott out again. Probably too close to take. And he was able to follow it off. So the eighth pitch of the at bat. Bradley cutting and slashing. Scott has done it on a minimum of pitches so far. Number 73 on the way. There's the first walk of the game issued by Scott. And a leadoff man aboard. And a reminder, Sox fans, join us on Sunday, July 20th, as our Sox take on the Houston Astros at 110. The first 10,000 kids ages 13 and under will receive a retro White Sox pennant presented by Prairie Farms and North Star Frozen Treats. So purchase your tickets today by visiting whitesox.com or calling 866-SOX-GAME. Bradley five for five and stolen bases. And here's Bogarts. Takes first pitch strike. Count even. Good lead. And the count one and two. Make your plans to be with us tomorrow night, right here, same place. WGN Sports on the U, for game two. With Johnny Danks against Brandon Workman. And on Wednesday, Chris Sale against to be announced, and that game will be over Comcast Sportsnet. And on Thursday, Quintana against Lester. A couple of southpaws in that one. And that game also on Comcast Sportsnet. Then it's off to Cleveland for three. And after that series, we'll have the All Star break for four days. Count evens, two balls, two strikes. Xander Bogarts, 21 year old infield. Who played for the Netherlands in the 2013 World Baseball Classic? Good job by Tyler to keep it in view of Bradley. A lot of times red runner first. You can see it. He's not going to go. But then you have your exceptional base runners. Well, they, they see it hit that dirt. They're off. Say they take it off. They take off because they know, even if a catcher catches it cleanly, coming off the dirt, it's a tough throw for him. Jose Valentin was one of the best I've ever seen. That Ozzy was good at that. Just got a piece of it.
get nonchalant. There he goes. There's a strike him out. And he calls him safe. So one out. Good throw by Tyler Flowers. Got in. I think Gordon thought at first he was going to get him. Now they go through a different set of signs. It's been the first base runner at second base tonight. If you're just turning in, they only have one hit. That was by Pierzynski. Lead off the third inning. A bullet between first and second. There is Brock Holt. Takes strike one. He is struck out and grounded to short. Oh, and to the count. The runner at second and one out. Boston has scored 34 percent of the time. Sox pitchers have given up a run 43 percent of the time, and the league average, oh, very close to the middle, 37 percent. And that's foul. Kansas City. Leading Tampa Bay 4 0. Big game, James. Seven innings. Three hits. Now, Wade Davis is on in the eighth. That's usually not real good news for the opposition. Davis is really getting it up there, and he's found a home in that bullpen. And Shields with 10 strikeouts. Seven innings. Against his former mates. Ball hit hard. Lexi, low throw. Nice play. Two down. Oh, what a pickup Infante was for Kansas City. He has had some hits. He, two for four tonight with two big RBIs. He is really. Even after going on the DL. Well, it's a couple of things also. I mean, you sign him, he was with Detroit. So for them, before they got Kinsler, they were going to have a problem. Kinsler's been very good for them. He's been terrific for them. Kinsler's been really good for them. And why not? He's a really good player. And then Prince got hurt, so Texas, that's another situation where Texas gave up a quality player, getting a quality player in return, a guy who played just about every day, and he winds up lost for the season to neck surgery. And Fonte's been one of the one of the leaders on that ball club, knocking in big runs. Two and over the count to Nava. It was grounded to Beckham and also grounded out three to one. Out in the 2 0 pitch. Grabs the strike. 
Houston now leading Texas 9 to 2. George Springer do anything in that one? One for three. Singleton's two for three with his sixth home run already. Three RBIs. Springer is going to be something to watch. And the rain has started to fall here again. It's actually raining pretty hard. Two out, two and two the count. Just as quickly as he started to stop. Last year, 303 for these guys. 12 homers and knocked in 66. And he's got a full count. With Pedroia on deck. Got him, and that'll return to side. So he has completed six pitches over the leadoff walk, and he leads it for nothing. Seven point five FM ESPN Deportes, Chicago's first and only Spanish language sports radio station. It's the top of the seventh inning, four five and zero oh for our Sox. No runs, one hit, no errors for their Sox. On our Xfinity Speed replay, it was a three-run bomb in the fourth. With two outs, nobody on, a double, a walk, and Viciedo down 0 2, worked his way back into the count and took it way out in right center field. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. And talking about Tank, he had a hard single to right and that free run bomb. I would venture to say this might be the longest. 
home run to right center field hit here this year by a right handed hitter. Well, it probably went about 419. Boy, Lou Brock hit one against us in the World Series here. See that giant glass sign out there? Giant glass. Way out there in right center. Well, that's foul back. Oh, that? That giant glass by the 420 sign. I see it. Yeah. You go up about 15 <laughs> rows. <laughs> you get it up there? Over the, over, over the that glass thing. Thing. Yeah. yeah, of course the giant glass wasn't there, but that's where it went. About about 15 rows up over that wall there. I was playing right field. I just that was the longest one I'd seen hit up in that area. It had to be 450 or 460, oh, something yeah. like that. Sure. Well, Brock was one of the few guys to ever hit it over that center field fence that whole polar grounds. Up high. Full count. He had a full count last time up. Pop up. AJ's got the bead and the ball. Felix Dubron, who was a starting pitcher for this team for a while, now is trying to find it out of the bullpen. One for two, a hard single, almost dehorned Buckholtz back in the fourth inning. Bogarts at the cut of the grass at third. I think Alejandro is hoping that. Buckholz doesn't throw him that cutter down and in. That's going right off his body again. There's that hook. Well, you got the Jim Dandy when he stays on top. Look at that ERA of his and you figure out what in the world's going on here. Well, that stuff he's I was gonna got. say, especially when you realize that he's got four pitches. But his ERA, which will not be helped tonight, was 622 coming in. Javi Guerra. Loosening up down in our pen. Take Leon, long time, terrific announcer here in Boston on the radio. He's telling Steve out before the game that Buckholz could run with Jacoby Ellsbury. Which is somewhat amazing. Yeah. That was during their minor league days. They come they came through the system together. Pretty good pitch. Had part of the plate. Two down. 
This is very similar to the same pitch that Dunn got called out on. A little late movement taking it over the corner. Although AJ does try to bring it back to sell it. And they got the call. They'll bring up Tyler. Boy, he just hit a rocket in the center field right at Jackie Bradley Jr. Then he struck out. Changing his setup at the plate a little bit. Using more of a Canerco setup. Everybody's okay. That's <laughs> good <booing> because <laughs> he, he took the bat away. <laughs> now he's sitting there, go keep it for himself. <laughs> hey, that's quite a souvenir. Curveball strike. Two out, one and two the count here in the top of the seventh inning. Well, that game yesterday was really one nothing over Seattle. Noesi, six and two thirds, five hits, two walks, five strikeouts. Just what the doctor ordered. As he gets him, so a seventh inning stretch, we lead it by four. Justin Pedroia to lead it off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's a four to nothing game. Our Sox have out hit their Sox five to one. Scott Carroll still in the ball game and he's been brilliant. So Pedroia. 
over for 2. It'll be Pedroia, Ortiz, and Napoli. And the big three in the middle have yet to have anything leave the infield. That ground ball, the second by Pedroia, and a strikeout. So oh, the 30 year old spark plug of this ball club. Trying to start something off against a guy who's having just a terrific, terrific out. Going to the count. 11 ground ball outs. Giving up just the one hit. What a night for Scott Carroll. Well, you said at the outset he's got to keep the ball down. And he's done it. Well, he's pretty good because that sinker has a lot of late movement. So when he's throwing it, maybe top of the knee and sinking it just below the knee. You can hit the top of the baseball. You can hit a ground ball. Nice little Hawthorne Woods hop for Leary at third. One out. And Sox fans, check out the Xfinity Fundamentals deck overlooking left field at U.S. Sailor Field. Accessible from the 100, the 300, and the 500 level. So young Sox fans can learn baseball fundamentals from White Sox training academy coaches. And the space features batting and pitching cages, base running areas, and baseball skill instruction. So it's all from Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. First pitch strike. Did Poppy thought it was a low. Oh and two. Twice he has gone out to Beckham in short right field. Next pitch will be number ninety nine. And Garrett continues to throw in the pen. Two and two and two. Just turning in. He scored one in the second. Home run by Dunn. Scored three in the fourth. A bomb out of here. Three run shot by Dissier. So he had him. 0 oh and 2 it is now 3 and 2. And at 100 pitch mark is why Garrett continues to throw. And that's a fair ball. Another ground ball. And once again, if you think Chris Sale is an all star, there it is. WhiteSox.com slash vote, MLB.com slash vote. Text A5 to 89269. You decide if he's going to be there or not because you can decide. Here's Napoli. He's grounded to Beckham and to Alexei. Two and oh.
Come back and get it. No walks. And there is the second walk. Coming with two out. Here comes Robin, and I think at that pitch total, the fact that he's got him within seven outs of a win, he probably will go to that path. And I think that's what he's going to do. And a job well done by Scott Carroll, who was absolutely brilliant. Did exactly what Robin wanted. He took him deep into the ball game with the lead. So as Scott walks off, we'll step out and be back after these messages. Inherits Napoli at first base. There you look at some pretty impressive numbers. It's a four to nothing game. Scott Carroll gave up just one hit. What a performance by that 29 year old rookie. So here's Drew, a strikeout and a ground out to first. Remember that curveball up high. And if AJ doesn't get that hit, it's a much more difficult decision for Robin. As it was, the decision was pretty easy. That fastball has popped up. Piazza. And that'll retire the side. We've completed seven and we lead it four nothing.
Matt Carroll, brilliant. Six and two thirds innings, one hit, five strikeouts, two walks. Home runs, the key. Missy Hito's three run shot in the fourth. Adam Dunn's solo shot coming in the second. And Ovisiato, he has been red hot. Start something special with great leases and low financing on a new Honda. Visit shophonda.com or your local Honda dealer. That's a good thing, too, because Buckholz retired the last 10 he saw. He was getting better, but pitch count up there. Felix Dubron comes in at 2 and 4, his ERA well over 5. He's on for the 13th time, 10 of them as a starting pitcher. But he couldn't get the ball over consistently enough, and so now they want him to work out his difficulties out of the pen. So a meeting of the minds at the mound. And we'll have Leury Garcia then back to the top of the order with Adam Eaton and Gordon Beckham. In case you did not know, Encarnacion was put on the disabled list, and Kyle Seeger is going to take his place on the All Star squad. Yeah, that was pretty nasty. Going across the bag at first, seemingly stepping on the first base and foot turned his ankle, and he had to have some help getting out. That right, pitch outside. Theory 0 for 2. One and one the count. So no sooner had Toronto gotten Batista back, now they lose Encarnacion. They've lost four in a row. They're two games back of Baltimore in the East. And I check it up one and two. Yeah, they lose either one of those guys. They go. Gonna be a tough go, and as we've seen, they have all kinds of problems against left-handed starters. It's not going to help with Encarnacion out of the lineup. Well, it's just just two different ball clubs. And you throw a good left-hander out there versus a good right-hander. And the best part about it, they know it. <laughs> They're just gonna have to get some help. Yeah. Well, they got the right man, Paul Beeston. General manager, they do a good, that's a good 10. So one out. And here's Adam. Adam is lined hard to center field, grounded to second and grounded to short. One of the better seats in the house, actually. Did you ever go inside out there? Yes. Yeah. Let's say it needs redecorating. <laughs> It's been around for a bit. Needs some, Need some vacuum cleaners. <laughs> some of the supersized <laughs> vacuum <know>. cleaners. <laughs> the green monster, legendary. Baseball history, tradition. That's up high. Two balls in a strike for Adam. Boy, he has been like Pac Man out there in the center, hasn't he? He's running all over the place, eating up everything Whitey saw. He's made made a terrific difference in years past. The guy that can go get him alley to alley, not afraid to go up against the wall as we've seen any number of times through the first halfway part of this year. What a great pick. What a great pick. What a great deal. The fans out here who follow our socks. I had never seen. I mean, 
So when I found out we got him, first person I called was Steve. He says, Tony, what are we, what are we getting here? He said, Hawk, you're going to love this guy. And Sox fans are going to love him for quite some time. As he gets him, two down. And then I called a couple of friends of mine who were scouts. I said, What are we getting with this out of me? He said, Verbatim, Hawk, you're going to love this guy. Yeah. He's got a consistently revving motor, whether it's on the base paths or in center field. That comes off for three. He's due. Oh, nice pick by Bogarts. That's a hang wolf. Meanwhile, we'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It is still four nothing. Good guy. On July 20th at Bub City for a night of live music, comedy, and the off the field talents of your favorite White Sox. Now, tickets are just 125 bucks and they are extremely limited. So, to purchase tickets, visit WhiteSoxCharities.org or call 312 674 5391. Bottom of the eighth inning. AJ Pierzynski, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Xander Bogarts. Lower third of their order to face Javi Guerra. Javi came on for a third and saw to it that Scott Carroll would finish the evening giving up no runs. AJ has their only hit. Only hit in this ball game. That was a bullet between first and second, leading off the third. Ball hit sharply to Beckham. Curve ball. One down. Here's Bradley, a strikeout and a walk. And then he picked up his sixth stolen base. That one didn't miss by much, but it was enough. Outfield straight away, and Leura very close at third. Base hit left field, the second hit for the Red Sox. Piazza gets it back in, and that's the first hit 
since the leadoff hitter in the third, and that was A.J. Pierzynski. Zach Putnam now getting loosened up in the pen. And Xander Bogarts, who made that fine play to end the eighth inning, stands in. He's 0 for 2. Line out to center field in the third. A strikeout victim in the sixth. Short lead at first by Bradley. Bobby's he's got a very quick move to first. You'd have to think that. Arnie Byler has already told him about that. So the rain starting to come down ever so gently again. If you missed it, just under a 40 minute rain delay to start this game. And then a magnificent performance by Scott Carroll. The Bogart fouls it straight back. Infield halfway looking for two, and they get the ground ball. They're only going to be able to get one here, and a fine play by Ramirez. Good backhand and a big effort to get the out at first base. That is just, I'll tell you, Alexi this year, I think we've had more fun watching him. I, I know for me, Ozzy was a good shortstop. We had, you know, he was fun to watch play. Alexi this year has just been so much fun to watch. His range has been phenomenal. That's one of the most difficult plays to make because it wasn't a short hop, it was on a long hop, and he was sure. he was coming to his right well, away just from the throw. A great instinct because you got to put your glove in exactly the right spot. It's the right height. So Brock Holt. Who's 0 for 3, but hit the ball very hard last time up in the sixth. Couple of ground outs and a strikeout. For his night. And he's playing right field tonight. We'll probably see him in a different spot tomorrow night. That evens the count of one and one. One of the most surprising things about these Red Sox this year is the fact that they have not been able to dominate here at Fenway Park. Three under 500, which is very unusual for them. And the count goes to two and one. Yeah, when you consider it's almost 90 games into the season. This is number 90. Held that one off his foot. That's not going to feel too good. What well, is hard to believe that after this ball game this evening, whenever it does come to a conclusion, we'll have just 72 games left. Well, when you're having some fun, time flies, and this has been a fun club to watch. It's a very emotional team. Lee. We said that in spring training. This was going to be an emotional team, and it certainly has been. We also felt that it would be an entertaining team, and it's had some wonderful moments this year. Well, usually when you have an emotional team, this would be entertaining. Last year wasn't too emotional. <laughs> <laughs> no. Little chopper. And Jose has it. He'll flip to Javi. And that's the inning. So with the score still four to nothing, we'll move into the top of the ninth inning and the heart of the order do up Abreu Dunn and Ramirez.
the final American League All-Star. Go to WhiteSox.com and cast your 2014 All-Star game final vote. So Chris Sale to the All-Star game at Target Field in Minneapolis. Voting is at 3 p.m. Central on Thursday. And do you think Chris Sale's an All-Star? You decide because you can decide it. You can. You're the only people that can decide it. So get out and vote. And I think we all agree he's an all-star. I think we all agree that it's unusual that he would be in the running for the last player chosen with the kind of year he's had. Sure it is. My drive base hit. So Ray you now is hit in 20 of his last 21 games. Jose was looking for that left hander threw a fastball down and he ripped it in the left field. Well that's that's baseball here is. Buckholz coming in with a three and four record of six point two two. ERA and he's got some of the best right handed stuff in the American League. That's the most surprising thing when you look at the hits per innings pitch for him. Unbelievable it, it was because this guy is just tough to deal with 87 hits and 63 and two thirds. Coming in. It's amazing. He's one of those low hit guys. There's Adam Dunn having a big night. Solo homer, a double. And he scored two runs. So two for three. It was that fastball by him. So they do have the shift on and Napoli is holding Jose close at first. That's I don't think Jose is a threat to steal. I mean that's just me. I just don't think that he's going. Q <laughs> depth off the end of the bat. Adam has faced Dubrock seven times. He's yet to get a hit. That ball skips in front of plate. AJ able to corral it. And no advancement. That fastball fouled off. Adams had some of the best swings tonight he has had in a couple of weeks. Well, seemingly he's been on just about everything, and I don't know if it's a ballpark. He said this park has always looked a little strange to him. I was walking in with him, and he said for some reason he doesn't know what it is. It seems like the park is not symmetrical to his eye. It certainly didn't bother him in the second and fourth. Well, it's amazing. It's amazing how different parks fit your eye. Yeah. I mean, it really, you know, you'd have to, you'd have to experience it to, to really believe it. Like you walk into Dodger Stadium, look like the picture, picture was right on top of you. Check swing foul. You know, looks like he was right there, right on top of him. To me, in this ballpark, it looks like the guy was pitching from almost second base. <laughs> that, that's a terrific feeling for sure you. Sure it is. Yeah. AJ wants a fastball. He probably wants it away. That one lifted into right field. And it's going to be caught by Holt. So a little looping line drive provides the first out of the inning. And that'll bring up Alexei Ramirez. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. He drew that walk after Dunn had doubled and it set the stage for a three run homer in the fourth inning off the bat of Dan Vicieto his 11th he now has 34 driven in. You know you're starting to hear that even in golf a lot.
lot more now. Well, this course fits my eye. This course fits my eye. And the same thing holds true. I'm sure the same thing holds true. And I know it did when I played basketball. Some courts look like the hoop was this big around, and others <laughs> look like it was the Panama hat. Oh, and two count on Alexi. He's faced a run nine times, has a couple of hits. Well, second for one, back to first, double play, and out of the inning. So we head into the bottom of the ninth inning. It's still a four to nothing game. And it's a non safe situation. And Putnam has been very good. 3 and 1 ERA, 241 on for the 29th time. Save opportunities, 1 of 2, but opponents hitting just 220, which is a good number, and he's got to go right through the middle of the order. Nava, Pedroia, Ortiz. And hopefully that will be it. Nava is 0 for 3. Granted out to second, granted out to first. Great, you made a good play. He grounded out to second again. So we have four runs on six hits, no errors. They have no runs on just two hits, no errors. Singles by Pierzynski and Bradley. That's it for the Carmines. And Putnam outfield straight up, spread out. First pitch strike. Right at the corner, outside corner of the strike zone. The novel. Tomorrow, Johnny Danks against Brandon Workman right here. Same place, same channel. 21 to count. And on Wednesday, Chris Sale against to be announced on Comcast Sportsnet on Thursday in the finale. Because they contend against John Lester, a couple of good left handers. And that on Comcast Sportsnet. Two and one. All right, Zach, no walks, buddy. Three and one. 
Bottom of the sixth in Texas. Houston leading the Rangers 10 6. Yankees beat Cleveland 5 3 at progressive field. Ball hit hard. Right at him. We got a man there. Hang Wolfham. One down. And here's Pedroya. It is 0 for 3, a couple ground balls and a strikeout. Throwing away. Jumping around on Putnam, two and zero. Oh. First time that Bedoya has faced Putnam, as it will be for David Ortiz on deck. There's one. If you're just tuning in. Scott Carroll had the outing of his young career. Yeah, he was very, very consistent from the beginning, keeping the ball down, making sure they hit the top of the baseball for the most part, and handcuffing him on just one hit through six and two thirds. And how do we do much better than that? Block two, fan five. And just the AJ single past the diving Gordon Beckham was the only hit they got. Until Bradley got a hit. But that was against Javi Garrett. Through two pitch. Now well, Scott must have heard your pre game analysis <laughs> on what he had to do. Well, I think he's to beat this club in this ballpark. Okay. But we know he's capable. We've seen him throw three ball games similar to this, not quite as good as this, but very good. And that's when he's got him beaten ball into the ground. Leori's got him. Two down. Did not have the ball out of the infield. He probably thinks the whole world is a sinker baller at this point. That's all he's seen is good sinkers. Big Poppy. Pitchers of record are the starters. Got Carroll. Play buckles. To hang on and win it. Scott will be three and five. And buckles will be three and five. Oh and two the count. So the Carmine's down to their last bull. Six nothing. Six fourteen and zero for the Royals. Zero four and one. The Ray Shields the winner over Odorizzi. And a 
full count. Ortiz. Two for two. Mike tonight is grounded to second, short, and walked. Splitter at 84. Alexei, and this ball game is over. So the Sox come in here after taking that one nothing victory over Seattle yesterday. Two shutouts in a row. That is the third shutout this year for our pitchers. As Scott Carroll was outstanding, we win it 4-0 and we'll be back. <laughs> 